Hey, Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Philadelphia Eagles Now. We're jumping the latest Eagles news and rumors, including some, I think, not great injury updates on one Jordan Howard. It's coming up here in just a couple of seconds. First, though, like this video the way the Eagles beat Washington, right? You want to jinx this. You like the video, the more likes we get, the better the chance the Eagles have of beating the Washington football team. A little superstitious here on Philadelphia Eagles Now, really trying to go ahead and get those likes up there. I mean, at least 300 of you guys should like the video, right? Go drop a like down below. Let's get this win against the Washington football team. Let's start today's video. All right, so as I mentioned in today's video, we jump into the Jordan Howard news. And I had mentioned that Jordan Howard suffered a stinger in the Sunday win over the New York Giants. Didn't play a lot in the uh, the fourth quarter of that game, although it was already a blowout. And I thought nothing of it. Stinger, not a big deal. There's a little bit of hint in the Monday press conference that, oh, you know, he's kind of a little sore. And now it's turned into the fact that he actually might not play on Sunday. Like, they're trying to get him ready. And head coach Nick Cerrone said that yesterday. They're working very hard to get him ready to go. But they haven't really told us exactly what's going on in terms of, is it a neck? Is it a shoulder? Is it an arm like it's upper body because he landed weird but uh, not good news in terms of what's happening right now with Jordan Howard they also put Kenny Gainwell on the injury report this week not really sure exactly what's going on with him but technically the only healthy running back on this roster right now is Boston Scott because of course Miles Sanders had a broken hand and is officially ruled out for Sunday's game against the Washington football team here is a quote from Bleeding Green Nation's write-up on the Jordan Howard uh, injury and I think they do a pretty good job of explaining what's going on we'll throw it up on the screen right now quote Howard being listed as a DNP isn't the best sign for his playing chances. Perhaps neither is Sirianni saying that Howard is working like crazy to get back for this week's game. With the Eagles' offense identity based on running the football, it's not ideal that they could be without their top two ball carriers. Gamewell is an unexpected addition to the injury report. The Eagles also have Jason also have Jason Huntley and the recently signed Kerryon Johnson on the practice squad, end quote. So now you're running back depth chart, which was once very strong. I mean, was four deep is coming down to probably two deep, right? If Howard doesn't play, let's assume he doesn't play, then it will be the Boston Scott show, which isn't a bad thing. We all like Boston Scott, although he's more of a giant killer than a Washington football team killer. And then I guess number two would be Gainwell because the injury seems to be minor. Like, I think Gainwell will play. And that would mean they would elevate Kerryon Johnson or Jason Huntley from the practice squad. Kerryon Johnson, you remember, in, pre in preseason, I was a big fan of his. Great in pass blocking, great in pass protection. Ended up not making the roster because they had Jordan Howard and uh, Boston Scott and or, uh, uh, Kenny Gainwell and Miles Sanders, like a lot of guys on there. But this running back depth chart definitely has dwindled over the past week. And it's something to keep an eye on as the Eagles face a very important as we'll talk about game against the Washington football team. I think the Eagles really do need Howard to play. Like, now, obviously, you don't want to rush Howard back because you still need him for Week 18, eventually the wild card round of the playoffs. Like, get him healthy. That's important. But he is a major part of this running game. Even when Miles Sanders is healthy, Jordan Howard is the number two back. And when Miles Sanders is not healthy, as he will not be for the next couple of games, Jordan Howard should be getting the bulk of the carries. And he's been fantastic when filling in. Go back to the Denver Bronco game weeks ago when he was filling in for Miles Sanders. He looked absolutely fantastic. So we'll keep an eye on this. We'll update you guys here. But it isn't not looking good for Jordan Howard's uh, ability to play on Sunday. I'm sure he'll be a game time decision, so things can change. Let's hope he's able to play uh, come kickoff time, 1 p.m. Eastern against the Washington football team. Pin comment, ad break down below. Will the Eagles rushing attack struggle or thrive on Sunday? What do you think? With all the injuries that's going on, type S down below for struggle or type T down below for thrive. Now, some good injury news. We talked about this yesterday on the show, and once we had put the video out, literally as soon as we went live, like a couple of minutes later, they released the fact that most of the people on the COVID list we talked about yesterday are now off the COVID list, minus Derek Barnett. Barnett is still on the COVID list, but as you see on your screen, Leverett Raven Clark is off the COVID list. Andre Dillard, backup left tackle, off the COVID list. Ryan Kerrigan, he will play against his former football team in Washington. He is off the COVID list. Teron Jackson's off the COVID list, and just literally five minutes ago, Sean Bradley was released from the COVID list as well, meaning that all these guys are eligible to play on Sunday, which is great depth-wise. I mean, Kerrigan, again, a chance to get a sack against his former team. Teron Jackson's played some meaningful snaps as a rookie, and really, Sean Bradley is the best special teams player they have. He's a Pro Bowl alternate, so good news there on the injury front for Philadelphia. Of course, if anything changes, we'll cover it here on the channel. It's what we do. It's our promise to you. Be sure to subscribe down below for the latest Eagles updates, news and rumors, uh, Howard stuff as well, and of course, breakdowns on Monday. It's what we do here um, on the channel. Heading into the new year, it'll be a, a new year with the same us doing all the great Eagles coverage here on the channel. All right, before we get into uh, our final stories of the day, including the path to the postseason. Quick shout out to our friends at BetUS. Get your bets in now. I always place my bets on Thursday, and so after this video, I'm going to do my BetUS bets officially for Sunday. We talked about those yesterday. If you guys want to jump in on the game, chatsports.com forward slash Eagles bet. Promo code is Eagles125. Get that 125% deposit bonus whenever you first sign up. If you haven't bet on any Eagle games this year, I think Sunday is a great opportunity. I think Eagles are minus three and a half versus the Washington football team. I think they're going to win this game and probably cover as well. And so I'm betting Philadelphia. You guys, I think, should too. 
to again you turn your hundred dollar deposit your first time deposit into 225 bucks with that 125 percent deposit bonus which you can use of course to bet for against or on a different team in the national football league Speaking of that Washington football team game, um, it's setting up really beautifully for the Eagles to clinch on Sunday from a timing perspective. You see your three scenarios on your screen. So you got to beat Washington. Obviously, that'll take place in the 1 o'clock window. So you have to watch that game. Eagles win that game. Check. You move on to the 3 or 4 o'clock window Eastern time because that's when the 49ers kick off against the Houston Texans. The Niners beat the Texans. Check. You have 2 of 3. Then you roll into the 8 o'clock window Sunday night football. Vikings on the road of the Packers. If the Packers lose, or sorry, win against the Vikings, the Vikings lose. Check number 3. Three, that's your bingo, tic-tac-toe, three in a row, whatever it is, the Eagles are going to the postseason. So you cannot have one without the other, and so all three must have to actually take place, but it'll set up nicely to where you just focus on Philadelphia, then you focus on the 49ers, then you focus on the Vikings to make sure that, you know, of course, win, win, and then a loss by the Vikings, and the Eagles will go ahead and jump into the playoffs. I think it's going to happen. I mean, the, 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 the most likely scenario here that would ruin it would be Philadelphia losing to Washington. I don't see the Texans beating the 49ers, even if it is Trey Lance at quarterback, and I don't see the Vikings going on the road and beating the Packers. That would be a big upset, one that's necessary for the Vikings to make the postseason, but an unlikely one in my opinion. Finally here, quickly, a fun story that I think you guys will uh, appreciate here. Doug Peterson. We've mentioned Doug Peterson in a while. Former Eagles head coach, Super Bowl winner. Obviously, that's a, a big deal. He gets a free drink in Philly. He should uh, whenever he wants. There's a report out yesterday that Doug Peterson will be interviewing for the Jags head coaching job. The first head coaching interview he will have had since being fired by the Philadelphia Eagles in kind of dramatic fashion after the 2020 season. Um, obviously, he did not coach last year. I think that was the right move. I think taking a gear off, kind of like Andy Reid did for signing with the Chiefs, to kind of reset yourself, focus on family, and kind of really figure out what you want to be as a head coach part two in the National Football League. And uh, I think it's good odds that Jags won't be his only interview. I think Jacksonville should 100% hire him, by the way. I think this is a great fit. Young quarterback. You can see what he did with Carson Wentz, build up Trevor Lawrence. He is very different from Urban Meyer. He's a very team-centered, you know, centered-focused guy. I think he's fantastic. I think that he's going to get multiple interviews, but the Jaguars would be dumb to turn him away. Other head coaching openings here quickly that have not officially become openings. Some have, some are not, but I think will be. I think the Raiders, obviously, are going to look for a new head coach. The interim uh, tag there is not going to last for the current guy. I think Chicago for sure is firing Matt Nagy. That it seems to be uh, basically a done deal. They won't do it this week or next week. They'll do it at the, the end of the season. Uh, Jacksonville, of course, is open. I think Pete Carroll gets fired in Seattle. Another good opening there. Could Doug and Russell Wilson or Doug keep Russell Wilson? That's a thought process. And, of course, Minnesota. If the Minnesota Vikings don't make the postseason, and I don't think they will. They have to upset us to do so, which is, you know, hopefully doesn't happen. Uh, I do think that they would go ahead and let go of their head coach as well. I just don't see how Mike Zimmer would, would, would keep that job because he's just so mediocre, right? I mean, he has some good offenses, some decent defenses, but never can put it all together and win enough football games besides, I guess, the one wild card win on the road against the Saints the Vikings had a couple of years ago. So those are going to be the five big openings that I see. I think there could be some more. Maybe Denver gets mixed in there. Who knows? But I just think we should type good luck down below to wish Doug Peterson luck in this interview. I mean, I type good luck in the comments section. We're all Dougie P fans, right? We all appreciate Doug Peterson, Dave, regardless of how it ended. I think it's more of a Howie Roseman issue than the Doug Peterson issue. We talked about it ad nauseum here on the channel, but I'm wishing him uh, a ton of luck going forward. Finally here, quickly, just look at a quick uh, little look stand. I'm sorry, a look at the playoff picture going into Friday, as it is Thursday today. Just a for a quick little refresher, a little reminder. You see the Vikings down there at the bottom, Philadelphia in at the seventh seed. A win on Sunday, a Niner loss. You bump up to the sixth seed and can essentially lock up your playoff spot. Um, we're going to talk more about this next week, but what happens if Philadelphia locks their playoff spot this week? Do they rest the starters in week 18, because, like, their, their position won't really improve between 6 and 7. Like, it's just, like, whether you play the Cowboys or the Rams or the Cardinals, like, they might rest their starters and kind of take it as a mini buy. I don't know. That could be an option for Philadelphia if they lock it up this week. We'll talk more about that coming up next week. All right, again, any questions or if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, do it at Real Thomas Mott. And make sure you guys are subscribed because we have a mailbag video coming up on Saturday, which will be uh, January 1st. So our first uh, video of the, uh, the, the, uh, the new year will be for you guys in a mailbag video. So hashtag Eagles down below to ask any sort of questions. For Philadelphia Eagles now, I'm Thomas Mott signing off to the rest of your day.